Well, this ought to be interesting. I'm heading off to a shop in town called Backcountry Sports. I'm going to check out their archery equipment and uh, hopefully I'll finish this day up with a bow fishing rig. But uh, I've already asked on the phone, got permission to film in this store. So this should be a really interesting little video. Stick around. All right, so we finally made it to Backcountry Sports. Time to take a walk inside and find out just exactly what they've got to offer me in the way of bow fishing equipment. Let's go. All right, so we found this one here that uh, I am quite interested in, and I very much like the price, but uh, I'm not entirely sure that I would want to have to work the riser and uh, make other attachments and things. I think I'd rather get one that has the inset. However, I am very interested in this for uh, potentially doing some deer hunting later on in my hunting expeditions. But for right now, I think my primary interest is those carp at the marina because something has to be done. So I'm not sure if this is the one I'm going to get or not. We're going to keep looking. So I'm just upstairs here at the Backcountry Sports and they've got this wonderful little shooting area here in the back. Upstairs, nice long range. Beat the heck out of where I was going to try it in my backyard, that's for sure. Alright, cool. First time shooting this gold the Yeah, pretty high. But that's the bow's first shot, so, I mean, really. I'll try my regular draw. Super high. That's what I say, that's why shoot recurve is pretty tough, because, you know, the first few shots, you're, you're kind of all over the place. The line is good, but high. Knock on this and get a... Yeah. All right, typical JT bear timing. Of course, I put the camera away just before he almost got the target. Isn't that just typical? So we're going to set our knock point, and typically you want to be about three eighths above square. You can kind of guess there's a piece of paper, whatever it makes it square. Raise it up, okay, and that's your starting point. And then, good trick is to leave this knock a little loose and you can use the serving of the thread of the string as threads to wind this up and down. Oh excellent. And it's a really easy way to get your bow tuned perfectly. Uh -huh. So it, it gives you a really fine adjustment. Excellent. Uh, well thank you very much for the heads up on that one. You want your knock, this is no good. So normally we'll do a serving there to kind of build up the string, but uh, Test purposes. A quick, a quick way to do it is just put a little piece of tape there and uh, roll some around. Try to push it off. And then it won't slide. Yeah, that sounded like a much more solid clip. I mean, if this doesn't have a, it doesn't have a rest on it. Bowl. So just put a little something there just to for it to throw one more of the word up until we put a rest on it. Then, normally, you shoot this through, uh, shoot it closer. From a distance, it's a little hard to see your arrow. Yeah. This is a 300 spine, so it's actually too much spine for this bolt. I was going to ask what uh, weight of arrow I should be using for that. If you go right behind me, you can maybe pick up the arrow flight as it kicks. Okay, so I'm going to draw it on the target here. And I could see just that little, that little flick in it. Another easy way to do it. Use a piece of paper. And these are basically every bow in this shop gets tuned. Not very good. Perfect. You know, so that, that's how we find out if we're getting a, a good arrow out of the bow. Oh, excellent. Hence the cardboard setup. And 400 spines, probably the arrow that would work the best out of this bolt. Okay. So we're just going to 
you stand up, that's about oh, 15, 15 feet or so. And we'll see how the tuning is on it. And of course, this all matters on how far you draw it, how much pounds you're going to pull. So, and that's crap. <laughs> you can see how the arrow kicked, kicked up and over right. So the right is telling me the arrow is too stiff. The, the kick up is telling me the knock point's too low. Oh. So now we got our knock loose there. So we're just going to screw it up about two, two, three turns. Raise the knock point up. And you can tell all that from the pattern and the way it rips through the yeah. paper. That's cool. So now I know I have to draw a little bit more to get the right spine or else change the tip and use a heavier tip or change the arrow itself and use a softer arrow, like a softer spike. The treadmill here is much better. So a much smaller tear. Yeah. So our knock point is getting better, but we still got a knock right. So I'll pull it back as far as I can. And of course I get the same hole. Go a little bit higher with the knock point. Well, I appreciate all this effort. I can see why you've got such great relationships with your customers. And now you can see our arrow. Yeah. Uh, come up closer here and have a look at this. You see the squiggly line? Yep. Well, that tells me that arrow is really bent. It's really bending lots because it's not. It's knocking right. And. Well, you wonder how the arrow knocks right because the riser is here. So how does it? How does an arrow end up knocking right because the riser is there? Well, in actuality, when the arrow is shot and the arrow is too stiff, it actually goes like this. And at that point, it's really bending this arrow, and it actually goes by the riser like that and oh, really? knock, knock right. The other, the other thing, if you're shooting. And say you're aiming, say you're aiming here, you're aiming there and you're always hitting over here, just about guaranteed your arrows are too stiff. Aha! Uh -huh. Because it's knocking right out of the bow, it straightens out and it hits here. So if you want to be more accurate and not worry about arrow flight, use a softer arrow. Softer arrow, it's good to know. So we'll grab a softer arrow here. Alrighty, I'm just gonna cut for a second. Which would be better for hunting to go to, because recurve, heavier arrow does equate to more energy. Okay. Not so much in the compounds, but recurve for sure. This is a 600 spine, so that's the softest you can pretty much get for a carbon. There is softer ones, but. Uh, so the larger the number, the softer the spine? Only on certain brands. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There is no consistent Basically, average thing. The, the, what it is, is that they put this on a jig, they put a two pound weight, if it bends 0.6 inches, it's a 600. If it bends 0.4 inches, it's a 400. Oh, well there's a logic to that. So we'll try, and the other thing too, like, I've been shooting so long that, you know, I kind of pretty much can roll it off my fingers good, but to be consistent, you really should have a glove or a tab, because these are gonna pile up. That skin is gonna pile up when you let go and it's gonna kick that arrow a bit. Yeah. So you won't get as consistent unless you play properly. With the... This is a 600 spine, 125 grain head, and a 45 pound bolt. All right. It's a little shorter arrow, and it's much better. Yeah, that looks really clean compared to the uh, first one especially. You can see by the point of entry, it's still knocking a little bit right deep. Hmm. So softer shaft or heavier head would be the solution, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Just making sure I'm getting all the facts here. Now, there, there you go. So I drew it a little bit further, and now you can see that it's going left big time. So a lot of it depends on how it's coming off your fingers. Yeah. You know, like uh, better release. This is what that arrow should do typically because it is too soft to spine for this bolt. So we'll try this 400 again. So now we're on the 400 with the 125 we're grain? We're going to use the tab now. Oh, it's just using the tab is the difference? And uh, 
there you go. Now we got a much different result with the tab. We got a knock up and we got a knock left. Oh my. So that just goes to show you the difference between shooting it off your fingers or shooting it off a tab. A much, much different result. So we're going to lower our knock point back down where it typically should be. And we'll try it again. Oops. And that looks pretty good. Give it out. Maybe we'll go a little bit higher. Maybe one we'll turn higher. See if I can get some fresh paper. And I missed. You want to make a better shot this time. Oh! Okay. So now we got this big, big squiggly line. Yeah, that's quite the tear. So that's actually not because the knock point is too high because the knock point is too low and it's actually kicking off of it. Oh my. Yeah. So we want to raise the knock point so some more. Raise the knock point. Back up. And we're still. We might be too high. Oh. So basically, this is the arrow that did that hole. This bow. It likes to be shot three fingers under. Okay, I'll it remember that. It seems to uh, uh, tune much, much better. That's our hole for our 600 spine, 125 grain head. These guys are all too stiff, too stiff. And uh, I'm gonna do one more here just to, just to see. Try and get some fresh paper. And that's not bad. I'll take that. So a little bit tear up and right. So if I pull a little bit harder on this, you should be able to get just a perfect arrow out of it. Very exciting. So now a little bit too hard, so it went left. So I pulled a little bit more weight on that one. And an anchor release is really critical. And there you go, not a bad angle. Yeah. That looks good to me. You got the beginning of a happy face going on there. So this is why it's so critical to know what your draw length is, what pounds you're pulling out of the bowl, because these two, these tears, that one I pulled an inch and a half further and it tore left. This one I pulled that inch and a half less than it tore right. So it's when it comes to Olympic shooting, they use what they call a clicker. And a clicker will give you the exact draw length every time. Oh. And this is why it's important for anchor, to have an anchor that's consistent when it comes to recurve. I like to pin to my chin. So this is a pretty good. And that one went right. So I can pull a little bit further, or I could use a, a little bit heavier head. And I went through the same hole. <laughs> I'm on you. It's nice. Where'd it hit? It's in the black foam thing there. It's nowhere near the paper that I was aiming for, but. Ah. Oh. We figured out that I need 600 spine and 125 grain head. And this boat prefers to be shot with three fingers under as compared to the two that I've been doing since I started with that glove. Okay. But uh, I am prepared to adapt. It's got a, a knock point on here, so I've never had one of those on my bows before, so he explained to me how that works with threading it up and threading it down. Oh, excellent. And uh, he's, a, he's a really wonderful gentleman. I'm so glad we came in here today. Yeah, it's been a, a very awesome experience. Yeah, and i got to say, you know, to anybody watching in the Valley, uh, backcountry sports, if you're interested in archery, you got to come here. you got to check it out. This is awesome. 
Well, that's closer to the height that I was going for. Excellent. And don't forget, he also has the best prices and the best knowledge to be able to help you out with uh, what you need to know. Well, absolutely. He went hunting with Fred Bear when he was a kid, so I don't know how many people in my generation understand how significant that is, but if you're about 10 years older than me and you're into archery, you know exactly how significant that is. Bear, Mr. Bear, almost one of the people that I've kind of named myself after, was an amazing hunter, an amazing converse, conservationalist, and he just took the whole world of filming and, and bow hunting to an entirely new level. So I am so privileged to be able to have somebody who has experience with him as an opportunity to learn from. I can't even tell you. It's awesome. I know we've been in here, what, two, three hours so far today? We have been in here a while, yeah. It's been an awesome experience. It really has. Here, um... And I have learned so much about tuning the bow, archery in general, how the arrows, the spines, the flex, and all that stuff works. Like, the, the shooting that I've been doing in the backyard with those PVC bows, it just doesn't compare. It, it just doesn't compare. I don't know how many yards away this is, but... Well, it's way down there. It is way down there. I better get good at this distance, though, because the odds of me getting a deer closer than this are pretty slim. If you guys are getting a cart closer than this, I got a kayak for that. I'm brushing the brim of my hat on there. So this is a 50 pound draw, and uh, it's a lot more, pardon me, 45 pounds. It's a 45 pound draw. It's a lot more than I'm used to from the PVC bows, and uh, obviously from those little cheap bows from Canadian Tire, but you know what, it comes down to nice things cost money, you know, if you want to get something nice, you don't go to a big box store and get something that they made 5,000 of them in a minute. Nice things cost money. It's the way it is. Important things, take practice. <laughs> okay, so I'm going for that little green piece of tape way down at the end. Okay, I'll zoom in on the little green piece of tape for you. Uh, I'd give it a foot on either side just to be safe. Oh, I got the full background. Okay. Am I making you nervous? No. Um, but it's a lot more force than I'm used to having to pull out. Oops. So I have a lot of practice that I'm going to need to put in with this. But <laughs> I'm so okay with that. So this is fabulous and uh, we're kind of hanging out in the upstairs of the store right now. I can't believe how awesome this guy is. Um, we should get downstairs to the shop floor though, and uh, we'll probably wrap this up back at the house. So, stick around. All right, so after all of that testing and tuning up, and I am just overwhelmed with how much energy he put into making sure that I was gonna be happy with my sale. I am so glad that I went to Backcountry Sports today and I'm even happier that they're not in Summerland, they're in Penticton. Right here, right where I live, Happy Bear, hello. So this is beautiful, it's a 45 pound draw, although at my draw length apparently it's going to be closer to 50 because I'm not a standard 29, I'm closer to a 30 according to him, and I believe him. Um, he came with the bow, he put the little knocker on there for me. He uh, put some serving line on there just to help my arrow stay in place. So that's between the black and the bronze is where my knock will fit for my arrow now and this will help me with my accuracy. I ended up getting an arm brace. Just kind of a protective gear because this hurts a lot more than my PVC bows. I don't know if you can still see it but I got a nice little welt form in there and that's only from a few shots upstairs. And I also picked up a bow stringer because I do not want to twist the limbs on this fine piece of craftsmanship. So this is really simple. If you don't already have a bow stringer um, or know how they work, I'll do a video on, on how to string a bow with a bow stringer because I'm not doing this without it. And uh, I have got to say this has been one of the greatest shopping experiences of my life. I am incredibly happy with my purchase. I'm happy with the three hours that I spent in the shop today learning so much that I had just no idea 
and I am incredibly grateful to have met such a wonderful individual who has so much experience. Alright, so I have got to say a huge shout out to Dave for all of his time today. You, sir, are an amazing man. You have a wonderful shop and uh, oh, many happy customers to you, sir. I'm, I'm sure they'll be happy. We just got to get them in the doors first. So I know I'm a happy customer and uh, any of you guys watching my videos, if you're in the Penticton area, make sure you come by, see Dave at Backcountry Sports. He's right across the street from Ramada. Easy to find. So insert traffic here. I'm going to say goodbye now. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic day. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I mean, really, come on, right? And don't forget to share this and most importantly, share backcountry sports. Dave is awesome. Have yourselves a fantastic day, everybody. See ya.